Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. Got a fantastic technology for you today and it's completely free. If you're trying to get your students to collaborate together, work on projects together, brainstorm together, produce a really interesting presentation together, this is the ideal technology. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some examples, then I'm gonna take you through some of the key features of Wakelet. That's the technology we're gonna be looking at. And at the end, I'm also gonna point out a couple of super important things so that you understand exactly how Wakelet works. It's not complicated, it's really worth watching this video from the beginning to end to get the full understanding because you'll be able to use it immediately with your students and it's super, super simple. Really hope you like the video. If you do, please like it. Please share it with other teachers. Please comment on it. And of course, join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. So here we are on the website. It's called wakelet.com. And you can just sign up. Lots of different ways to sign up. I've been using my Google account. So whatever way you want to sign up and I'll join you on the other side. So what Wakelet allows you to do basically is to put together whole collections of different content and different links and videos and text from the internet or from whatever you produce. So if I clicked on a showcase here, and perhaps we went to this one here, Global Collaboration with Microsoft Tools, and we can see that a group of, I'm guessing this is teachers actually, have got together to share what they think are interesting pieces of information, including text, uh, including some short comments, including some videos, all around the topic of Microsoft Teams. So students could do exactly the same. It could be building, for example, a project around a visit to London or a visit to Munich or a visit to Beijing or a particular monument. It could be perhaps around healthy eating, around the environment. Um, around nature. So what students can do is that they can collaborate and collect together different videos and internet links and audio files and they can write up content and they can add blogs and put it all together in one place but they can also add these lovely pictures at the background and also these images here on the front and what they can do afterwards is either share the link with other students or share the link with the teacher or they could stand up and present their work uh, to, a, to the teacher or to the rest of their class. They could easily do this as well even on Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So you can see it's a great technology and the thing is it's so easy to do. So let's look at the real basics of how Wakelet works. So let's make a collection around a visit to London, for example, okay? So we're gonna click here, and the first thing we're gonna do is add a title and add a description. So I've written my visit to London, the places I plan to visit when I go to London. Now this could either be done individually by one student or it could be collaboratively. And of course the topic could be almost anything. So you can put a title and a description, then you can click here and add a cover image. Now what we can do is choose from the library. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write London in and see if we've got any images associated with London. You can see there's absolutely loads. And I'm gonna use that one there because that just seems absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna click on that there and then that will be added. So immediately now I have got the kind of first part done. The interesting thing is then I can now begin to bring in different pieces of content associated with a visit to London, perhaps the museums that I might go to, some information about them, perhaps some videos, perhaps some text. Now I'm gonna start by just doing this individually and then I'm gonna show you how you can invite other students to join you. One thing I can do is click here and set that cover picture to just half, make it a bit smaller, and I'll do that just for now. 
And what we're gonna do first of all is begin to add content. Notice here, this is how you add the content. You just click on this button here, and then you can just simply begin to share links to different content. But what we're gonna do is start with video. So if we click over here, and we're gonna click on YouTube, and the good thing is that you literally just write in, say for example, London, okay? I'm just gonna do a really, and then hopefully it's gonna bring up loads of, let's say for example, let's do tour of London. So we might start with a tour of London as part of our project. And we can then simply, again, just do a search. It's gonna bring up lots of different ones. London city tour, that looks a bit too long for me, 25 second, uh, minutes. This one here might work. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna add it. And immediately now that's been added. Now. The students, and this is really interesting, you'll notice here that there's lots of text. I can actually now click here, and this is one thing I would encourage your students to do, and to edit the text that's here and completely change that text. So then a student could write here, this is a tour of London, it includes uh, Big Ben, should write, I guess write it with capitals, and London Bridge, for example, et cetera, et cetera. I won't write any more, but you can see, and obviously this is really important, we wanna make sure that the students aren't just putting up content, but they're actually working with the content and writing around it. So click on done. Now, the interesting thing is, is that we can now add content more content now we can actually move that content above or below and i'll show you that in a minute so let's add a few extra pieces of content and then we can look at how we can make it all appear differently on the screen so i'm going to click here and the next thing i'm going to do is simply add a link to the British Museum. So it's a website, the British Museum has a website and I'm just gonna share the link to the British Museum website. So I'm gonna click on that link there, copy that link, let's copy it, come back to the Wakelet and just paste in and immediately you'll see that again, it's gonna update and show me an image of the blog or the British, this is the British Museum blog actually. And then what I can do again is I can click here and I can edit the text that's here as well if I want to perhaps again get my students to write something different. Now notice that you can add content sort of everywhere. So you can add content, um, for example, you know, above the last piece that you've added up or below it. We're gonna click here, and this time what we're gonna do is gonna write something. So we're gonna add some text, okay? And I'm just gonna write in here, just really quickly a little bit of text. Now what I've done is I've written a piece of text that I'm gonna make nice and bold and nice and big, and then I'm gonna center it, and that's gonna work like a title. So if I now click on done, you'll notice that I've got this kind of the British Museum blog and now I've got this underneath. And I could even, if I wanted to, just put a little bit of text under that. So I could click under it, click under here, and now just write a little bit about the British Museum blog. So I've added in some text and I can click on done. And there it is, I've got some text, I've got my link to my British Museum blog underneath. Above that, I've got a video. Now, a couple of little things that I've noticed. If I want to get students to collaborate, so I want more than, you know, I want other students to work with me on this. Um, if I click here on invite, um, it doesn't generate a link to share with my uh, other students so that I can get other students to collaborate. The first thing that I need to do actually is just to, whatever changes I've made, first of all, to click on done and update them. Now, once you've done that, if you click on invite, you'll see, yes, the link is created, okay? And you can then copy, share that link with the stu another student, and then another stu student can join you and actually uh, add content. So let's look at that in action. So I'm gonna copy that link, and I'm now gonna log in as if I was another student. So I'm now logging in as another student. I'm just gonna simply paste in the link that's been shared with me. I press enter. It's gonna ask me for my name and I'm gonna say Tom. I'm gonna to click on add. And now I can begin to contribute by clicking on edit to the same activity. Okay, so I could click down here now and add some additional 
material. Notice we got here images. So I'm going to click on images and then it's going to click on upload an image and I can actually upload an image from my computer and bring that in as well. Now I've actually got some images of London. So I'm going to bring in this image here and add that in. Okay, so you can see straight away that it's really easy to get other students to collaborate and add content onto the site. Just a really quick interlude to say, if you like the video and you want more free videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com, loads and loads of technologies. And if you wanna keep up with my work, then sign up to the newsletter, that way you'll get updated with all the latest videos, the blogs, the webinars, and the courses that I run. Thank you ever so much, let's get back to the video. So I'm now logged in as myself again and I can calm down and I can see that Tom has added a picture into the collection. Now the next thing that I'm gonna to explain to you is super, super important and it's about some of the settings and there's a couple of them that you need to really understand. If you click over here and you make sure that it collaboration contributors editing items, allow all contributors to edit and delete all items in the collection. If you turn that off, this means that each student can only edit their contribution. So let me explain what that means. If we come back to the second person, that was Tom. Notice that Tom can edit his contribution, but Tom cannot edit the contributions added up by the other student. So it's a really powerful setting because often teachers complain that they don't like it when a system allows students to delete things that other students have added. So that means you can edit your content, but you can't edit the content of other people. Now, if we come back to the main settings and we change that so that you can now edit other people's contributions as well and we come back to Tom we're just going to refresh the screen you'll notice it's now completely different Tom has the ability to edit other students content so my advice is not to have that option on turn that off then students can obviously edit their own content but they can't edit other students content now the other and super important um, setting is how are you going to share your content so that other people can access it and view it and the probably the best setting is called unlisted so if we come up here and set it on unlisted that means that only people with the link can access the content that only people with the link can actually find and look through the material okay this way, obviously, if you do it public, then it's searchable on Wakelet. So I would set it as if you don't want everyone on Wakelet to make use of your Wakelet, and in many cases, you may be happy to do that. But if you're not, then set it as unlisted. OK, and then click on done. And what you need to do when you want to share your collection is simply to click here share this collection and you've got various ways the most obvious way of course is just to click on that copy link notice you can also get the embed code if you want to embed it into a blog or embed it into a website or embed it into even perhaps something like moodle uh, where you can also embed content or perhaps into a google uh, sites website for example you can also export as a pdf and of course there are other options. Okay, there's a couple of things I haven't gone into detail. You'll have to spend a little bit more time working on it. If we click on edit again, then just to sort of point out to you that there are actually quite a few different ways of adding content, including adding text, adding, uploading PDFs, adding content from tweets and from your Google Drive. So lots of opportunities, we've not looked at that, but I wanted to really set this out and show you how interesting the technology is. The other thing is if you want to reorder um, the content, you can click here on easy reorder and that will allow you to move things around. That's really useful. And the other little thing is just here, here is that we've got a different layout. So for example, we can click on here, we get a mood board 
let me just change the layout for example to move board and you'll see now the content is horizontal so that's just about everything on wakelet i think this is a great tool for getting students to work in groups for getting students to collaborate together there are certainly other ways that this technology could be used it could easily easily be used for discussions and i will make another video focusing on that as well Okay, really hope that video was useful. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. Uh, that way you'll get updated with all the latest blogs and the webinars and the online courses and the new videos that I upload. You can also, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell to get all the updates. And if you are interested in me doing some training for your organization, then please contact me and you can do that from my website. Thank you very much.